This is a path that we're following. The Buddha's first teaching was about the Eightfold Path, and his last teaching was about the Eightfold Path. which underscores the point what's meant to go someplace. And yet, if you try to measure your progress on the path, it's difficult. And if we were to ask for a show of hands, who, who in here has a practice that's in every way, every day is getting better and better, there wouldn't be any hands. There's progress on some fronts and what seems to be regress on other fronts. And yet we still keep at it. Partly just on the general principle, you know that if you're developing meditation, if you're developing concentration, you're better off than if you weren't. Because many things that we would need to make a objective measurement are not there. I mean, if you could wind up a doll of yourself, a doll version, and say, okay, this doll version is not going to practice, and this version is going to practice, and see where they would end up, you could actually make a comparison. But you can't see yourself. What would you be like if you weren't practicing? At the same time, as you develop your powers of mindfulness and alertness, you get more sensitive to what's going on in the mind, so that your notion of what's skillful or what's quiet in the mind, what counts as good concentration, what counts as a good insight, your standards are going to change. It's like that old issue in relativity. When you go faster. The ruler that you would use to, mention, <coughs> to measure things would change in its length. Time would change. So it's difficult to make comparisons. But in general, uh, you should be able to notice that you're getting more and more sensitive to what's going on in the mind. Today's concentration may not be better than yesterday's. But as long as you're aware of what's happening, you're doing it right. Because it's only when you're aware that you can deal with what's going on in the mind. So much of it has to do with how much you admit to what's going on in the mind, how sensitive you are to those little voices in the mind that used to be below the radar, or at least used to be inaudible, and now they are audible. That's progress. Because only when you can hear those voices and only can see what's going on, see the movements of the mind, can you do something about them. And there's also that principle that today's practice has got to be better than yesterday's, because yesterday's isn't around anymore. It's like that man sold Chinese dumplings. You drive down the road in front of the monastery every day. And he sounded a little drunk. He'd had a loudspeaker on his truck calling out that he was selling Chinese dumplings, Chinese dumplings. And today's Chinese dumplings, he would always say, are better than yesterday's. And tomorrow he'd come and he'd say, today's Chinese dumplings are better than yesterday's. It would keep up every day. They got, got better and better, according to his, according to his slogan. And he wondered at what point they were going to reach the platonic ideal of a Chinese dumpling. But then someone pointed out to me, they said, well, think about where yesterday's dumplings are right now. Either they're still in your intestines or they're down in the cesspool. They're, so whatever the guy is going to sell is obviously better than <laughs> yesterday's. As so I always think about you know, the breath you're breathing right now, the concentration you're practicing right now is better than yesterday's, because yesterday's is gone. You're dealing with what you've got right now. That's where you want to focus your attention. This is especially important when things went really well yesterday and they don't seem to be going quite so well today. 
And if you get fixated on that, you're not paying full attention to right now. So you drop that thought and stay where you are. Focus on this breath, this breath. Knowing that by exercising your mindfulness, exercising your concentration, it's got to get better. The one thing you do have to worry about is that tendency to think that if the meditation is going better, then it should automatically make your life better. And that's not the case. Because it's very easy to develop increased mindfulness, increased discernment while you're meditating, and just throw it away for the rest of the day. And John Fuang once had a student whose powers of concentration were really strong. And she complained to him that you know, she didn't see that it was having any influence on the rest of her life. She still got angry. She still got frustrated with people. She had a real problem with anger. It's because she wasn't developing any discernment and she wasn't using the discernment, consciously applying it to the rest of the day. Part of her problem is that when she was in concentration, it was very intense and she couldn't even think. And she didn't have that ability that a John Fuang was trying to teach her, which was to pull out just a little bit, not so much as to destroy the concentration, but just enough so you can observe what's going on. She was either in it or out of it, and that was it. So of course when she was out of it, it was like she'd been resting, but that was all. So an important part of the practice is learning how to Watch what's going on right now, right now, right now. And learn how to develop that talent in the rest of the day as well. When you're speaking to people, what's going on right now, right now? What are you saying? What's your motivation? The more you actually apply these principles, the better the chance they have of developing. So when you're with the breath, be prepared for the fact that the mind will wander off or something else will come up and it's possible that you would suddenly decide or something in your mind will hijack the process and decide that you want to think about that other thing. And so your ability to catch that happening and come right back to the breath, that's how you make the meditation progress. And the more quickly you can see how a distraction forms, and the more quickly you can drop it. That's how you develop your mindfulness. That's how you develop your alertness. It's not a matter of simply sitting here very still and trusting in the process. There is a kind of momentum that develops. But the possibility of it really developing and also being an influence on the rest of your life depends on your alertness right now. Your sensitivity right now. Your ability to catch little things going on that might pull you away and your ability to cut through any ties or any attachment that may develop. That's what makes the meditation progress. And you find that you can sense progress almost in spite of yourself. It's the unexpected things. Something comes up in the course of the day that normally would set you off, and you realize it didn't set you off. Or you can see it setting you off and you realize that you're pulled back from it a little bit. It's this ability to pull back and watch. That's one of the, the most important things that you're trying to develop as you meditate. So when an emotion arises or a thought arises, you don't automatically go with it. It's like something running out of your chest or running out of your mind. And you can see it because you're, you're staying right here. Instead of running with it, you're watching it run away. And when you don't run with it, it doesn't go very far. It's 
that's when you notice that happening, you realize, okay, something new is happening in the mind. A new ability is developed. And what may happen is, of course, now that you've got this improved ability, you see defilements you didn't see before. That can be discouraging, but don't let it discourage you. Remember John Fuang's image. If you have a room that you never dust, you never notice how much dust fell today, developed on the floor or whatever, because you haven't been dusting at all. But if you dust every day, then you notice even the slightest little bit of dust that comes. So it doesn't mean you have more dust, it actually means you're more sensitive. So on the one hand, you do have some trust in the process that by working on mindfulness and working on alertness, you're better off than if you didn't. But at the same time, you also have to push a little bit by trying to be as observant as possible. Try to heighten your sensitivity. Knowing that the more sensitive you are to the movements of the breath, the movements of the mind, the better chance you have of doing something about them. That's what really counts.